Chemistry, Biology, Material Science, Biochemistry, Physics. Only a few scientists can claim a role in advances across so many areas of science. Through a combination of intelligence, creativity, and dogged persistence, this year's honoree took a useful, if limited, research tool and opened the door to whole new vistas of investigation. Almost a half century later, researchers continue to build on and expand his work to delve ever deeper into life's mysteries. For his groundbreaking research in revolutionizing nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, the Welch Foundation salutes John S. Waugh with the 2011 Welch Award in Chemistry. Named after Houston oil man and philanthropist Robert Alonzo Welch, this award recognizes chemists whose dedication to basic research contributes to the betterment of humankind. Dr. Waugh certainly meets this criterion. He created a tool that for the first time allowed scientists to see the structure of such materials as viruses, proteins, peptides, polymers, and drugs, thus spurring advances in applications ranging from batteries to medicine. There were several things that made him successful. One was the fact that he was willing to go into a new direction, a new field, one that uh, had been worked on very hard, but there was still an unsolved problem. Uh, a large area, if you could solve the problem, then you could clearly make uh, a big impact on, on many areas of science. Dr. Waugh first started working with NMR as a graduate student, four years after its invention, building his first spectrometer out of war surplus materials. At the time, the tool was limited to studying materials in solution, as the dipolar coupling in solids produced big chemical shifts that masked the smaller shifts that NMR measures. I worried about that for a couple of years, trying to think about ways you might, so to speak, average out these couplings in it without dissolving the sample. And I finally figured out a way to do that. My knowledge of quantum mechanics was a big help there. And finally, one day, one of those eureka moments, I, it hit me just how to do it. I was, I was flabbergasted. It was a, a wonderful idea. And uh, I was at home having breakfast when that happened. And so I rushed down to the lab to tell my students about it, and they weren't there. <laughs> they weren't there. So I had to wait for another day to tell them the big news. After first demonstrating the technique experimentally, Dr. Waugh and his team then developed its theoretical explanation, known as the average Hamiltonian theory, still widely used today. NMR is probably the most important tool uh, chemists have today to do spectroscopy. Every organic chemist uses it every day, every inorganic chemist uses it, biochemists use it tremendously. He's really set the stage for many, many developments in all of those different areas. And, you know, that's made him a, an extraordinarily successful person, scientifically. In 1973, Dr. Waugh's group solved another major problem limiting NMR applications with a cross-polarization decoupling method that greatly increased the detectability of rare nuclei such as carbon-13. They carried out the first detailed theoretical analysis of magic angle spinning. Dr. Waugh also developed the first comprehensive theory of heteronuclear decoupling in liquid state NMR. Subsequently, the Waugh group turned its attention to the enormous increase in sensitivity that can be obtained by doing NMR at ultra-low temperatures of the order of 0.01 degrees Kelvin. John Waugh is an ambitious person to achieve the best that one can in chemistry. He respects the field of chemistry, he respects learning new things, and uh, he really is committed to uh, uh, making it work, uh, making it a successful venture uh, as, a, as a professor, both in his research and in his teaching. He's an excellent and clear teacher, and is of course a superb uh, researcher and experimentalist. Dr. Waugh, the son of an economics professor and amateur scientist, became interested in how the world worked at an early age. 
After earning an undergraduate degree in chemistry from Dartmouth and his PhD at the California Institute of Technology, Dr. Waugh joined the MIT faculty in 1953. Bob Silby first met Dr. Waugh as a young faculty member in 1966. He was this really great scientist uh, who would uh, treat you as an equal when you, when you began as a, an assistant professor. And, but he always was very involved with the young faculty. And, and he comes at problems in a kind of oblique way that is his own way of doing things. And I always say, how did, he, how did he do that? How did he start that and move in that direction and so on? So, and he's always surprising. He's got a very interesting mind. Dr. Silby, along with most who know Dr. Waugh well, relates stories of the chemist's interesting mind in his lighter moments, from punning titles for research papers to donning a disguise to check out a new instrument for a competitor firm, as Valdemar Zilberschitz of the New England Poultry Analysis Institute. He later put the disguise to other uses. He uh, appeared for the uh, photograph of the entire faculty of chemistry out in front of the building wearing his wig and beard and, and glasses. <laughs> so constantly uh, uh, surprising us and doing things that uh, many of us might have thought about and would never have the courage to do. I don't think of myself as a practical joker, but I can understand why people might say that. I've done unorthodox things sometimes. Practical jokes are, are underestimated. They're really a delightful kind of humor if done properly. Dr. Waugh found himself the single father of daughter Alice and son Fred when the children were 10 and 7. Very interesting being a single dad. Uh, and it, beforehand I wondered if I'd be able to hack it. But it turned out it worked out very well, and I, I really enjoyed it. Looking for something to do with the kids on the weekends, Dr. Waugh revived a passion from his graduate days, sailing. And they didn't like cocktail parties, and, and uh, I didn't like Walt Disney movies. So uh, I bought a boat, I bought a used sailboat. With his children, and later with second wife Sue, as well as friends and colleagues, Dr. Waugh spent decades happily exploring the Northeast waters. Looking back, now that I'm a parent and I have two kids, I don't know how in the world he managed to do that. I mean, he would, you know, obviously work here at MIT and do all sorts of, um, you know, world-changing things and discovering stuff, and then come home and make pork chops and mashed potatoes from a box or whatever. Somebody asked me what I had learned from him as a parent, and I think I said, lack of tolerance for intellectual BS. Or another way of putting it would be just intellectual honesty. You know, be open to different ideas, things you hadn't thought of. The thing about my dad that I'll always remember is that he, he did things on his own terms. And he wasn't, he never did something to please anybody, and sometimes uh, it probably cost him some opportunities, but uh, he stayed true to uh, what he believed, and he believes in science, and uh, he dedicated his life to that, and he was single-minded in that, and I think that's something I'll always admire. Dr. Waugh also loved to create outside the lab. He spent years transforming a marshy lot behind his house into a lush oasis, home to geese, turtles, birds, and other wildlife and playground for the family's two dogs, Bruno and Duchess, and his five grandchildren. His knack for building spectroscopy equipment also translated into more delicate projects, including a harpsichord he crafted from a kit of hundreds of small pieces. He met and married Sue almost 30 years ago. A former nursing home administrator, she is an avid watercolorist. John, I have to say, is a very humble fellow. When I first spoke with him on the phone and we were arranging our first date, uh, I said, and what do you do for a living? And he said, I teach chemistry. <laughs> I, you know, I think back, especially on times like this, where he is now the recipient of such a prestigious award, that he, in his heart, is a chemistry teacher. 
and he has just had uh, such a good time. It's been easy to live with him because uh, he's just doing what he loves. It's been a wonderful journey being married to John. Now 82, Dr. Waugh retired from his full-time faculty position in 1997, but still maintains an office at MIT and continues to pursue scientific questions and stay current on NMR advances. I went through a phase of being a computer nut. I can do all this stuff now with dialogues and graphics and all of that. And that was fun to learn. And uh, to have an excuse to do that, I set up a project to build a software suite that would simulate an NMR machine. He offers the Antiope system, which allows users to simulate NMR experiments to researchers for free. When not working, Dr. Waugh enjoys time with family and friends, and he keeps his interest in the world around him very much alive. It's important to know that I love the man. I mean, it's more than a professional relationship. This is a person who's got such character, such accomplishments, and uh, such a joy uh, to be with and have as a friend that I've learned to love him. And this is a colleague that I respect very, very deeply. An unorthodox thinker and creative innovator, Dr. Waugh blazed important new trails in science while living a full life as teacher and colleague friend, father, and husband. For his invaluable contributions to NMR spectroscopy, please join us in saluting John S. Waugh, the 2011 recipient of the Welch Award in Chemistry.